Want super crispy fried chicken? Stick around for my tips and tricks. Every good southern fried chicken starts with buttermilk. Get some and we'll soak the chicken. Also save two or three tablespoons and set aside for another use. For this recipe, use chicken tenders or cut breast into strips. Soak for at least two hours or overnight. Get out the seasonings in a zip top bag. The complete recipe is below, but for the dredge, I use two and a half cups of flour, kosher salt, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, and smoked paprika. Then my secret ingredient is baking powder. It helps add crispiness to the breading. Mix all of this together with the flour in a gallon bag and label it. You can use what you need and save the rest for another use. To fry, you can use a heavy pan with about two inches of oil, but I use my deep fryer set to 375. Either way, set up a draining rig and some tongs. Just before you're ready to fry, spoon out the amount of dredge that you need into a plate or shallow pan. Now take the buttermilk that we set aside and drizzle some over the flour. Only use about a tablespoon or so, depending on how much flour. We don't want the flour to be wet. We're just going for some craggy bits in the dry dredge. Now mix it up with your fingers. Yep, there's no other way. Rub your fingers together to mix in the buttermilk. This makes small craggy bits. At first the bits will be larger, so keep rubbing to break them down. This may take three or four minutes. These craggy bits will stick to the chicken and make them really crispy when you fry them. I use this dredge on all kinds of fried food. Okay, here's what your dredge should look like when you're done. Now to dredge the chicken, get a different draining rack to use only for the raw chicken. Then drain as much buttermilk off the tenders as possible and lay it in the dredge. The key is to completely cover the chicken while pressing in the craggy bits. Really press them in. Not kidding. Keep pressing. And pressing. And pressing. Now lay them on the rack and let them sit at least 10 minutes to allow the flour to adhere to the chicken. And go wash those chickeny hands. Now you have a clean draining rack clean tongs, and a separate raw chicken rack. We're ready to fry. Make sure your oil is at 375. Shake off some loose flour and lower it into the fryer. If you have a probe thermometer, get it out now. The finished chicken should be at least 160. You can fry a few pieces at a time, just don't overcrowd your oil or it'll cool off too much. Remember not to use your raw chicken tongs on the cooked chicken. Get new ones. When the tenders are golden brown and up to temperature, pull them out and put them on the draining rack for a few minutes. Now that's some crispy chicken. Now you're ready to serve it with your favorite dipping sauce or do it the southern way, white gravy. See you next time on Kimberly in the Kitchen.